Hello, everyone in Video Land. We're going to continue reading from Futuring, The Exploration of the Future. Chapter 1, Part 2. Let's see where we're at for you. All right, so gaining power over the future. The fifth lesson of the great explorers is think long term as well as short term. For the great explorers, many years might pass between their first dream of landing an expedition and their return home. Columbus spent years traveling from city to city trying to get funding for his expedition across the Atlantic. During those years, he often had little to sustain him except his own vision of what could be accomplished. He faced one rejection after another before Queen Isabella finally provided the money. Foresight empowers us to for future achievements, and foresight that expands well into the future can be especially empowering because we can do so much if we work for years towards a distant goal. Over time, an acorn can grow into an oak, and an infant can grow into an adult human, but there is no way to do either overnight. On the other hand, near miracles can be accomplished if we have a long-term goal and keep working at it, and long-term does not have to mean a thousand years from now. Extraordinary things can be achieved in a remarkably short time. Almost anything can be done in 20 years, asserts Earl J. C. Joseph, a system scientist and thinker. His statement may seem like a wild exaggeration, but consider this. From the moment that President Franklin Roosevelt gave the order to build the first atomic bombs, it took only four years to do it, even though it had never been done before, and many experts insisted that the task was impossible. President, When President John F. Kennedy ordered NASA put a man on the moon, it was done in only eight years. In each case, the U.S. government decided to do something extraordinary that had never been, been done before. The goal was envisioned and judged feasible, desirable. Strategies and plans were carefully developed, and the project was executed, was executed through intense effort. Both projects required careful studies of technological capacities, capabilities, and the development of a clear vision, something important that might actually be achieved. After that, things were done that astounded the world. You don't have to be a government to achieve a remarkable feast. All you generally do need to do, ah, but you do generally need to think and work on it for a sustained period of time. This requires envisioning a goal that you are willing to work at for a long time to achieve. Alan Hald, a young Arizona banker, envisioned a new goal for himself in 1975 while attending the World Future Security Conference, uh, World Future Society conference. At the meeting, he encountered the editor of a new magazine for computer hobbyists. At the time, nobody but governments and big business could afford to build a computer, but that situation was about to change drastically, and Howd suddenly had a vision for the future of computers. He returned to Arizona in a great excitement to talk with his partner about starting a business in computers. With that vision and lots of determination to realize it, their business, MicroAge, grew into America's largest microcomputer distributor, serving dealers around the world. Around the same time, Bill Gates and Paul Allen also developed a vision of the future of computers, which led them to business success. Within 20 years of developing their vision, they had become two of the richest men in the world. Howard Gates and Allen thus joined Christopher Columbus, Meriwether Lewis, and Ernest Shackleton in demonstrating the power of having long-term perspective on the future. If we are thinking long-term rather than short-term, we can much more productive, and the eventual results of our efforts can be extraordinary. Productive dreaming. <clears throat> thinking long-term is easier if you have a... Oh... Thinking long-term is easier if you have a dream to sustain you. In fact, it may be difficult to slog through the years of unrewarded labor and discouragement without a vision. And that brings us to the sixth lesson of the Great Explorers. Dream productively. The Great Explorers were basically doers, not armchair adventurers fantasizing about great deeds. What counted with them was the actual achievement of their visions. Dreaming fantasizing was a means to that end. The great explorers dreamed of the ships across the seas long before sailing them. In their imaginations, they tested their metal against a snake-infested jungles, blazing hot desert, cruel mountains, and merciless ice fo fo uh, flows. By exploring future possibilities in their imagination, they could anticipate the future needs realistically and prepare for what they lay ahead. For what lay ahead of them. This was productive dreaming, one type of futuring. For the great explorers, dreaming was not idle reverve, but research, a mental exploration of what lay ahead. By fantasizing about future events, they could explore alternative goals and strategies and thus develop a select worthwhile, worthwhile and achievable goals, as well as imaginative but realistic strategies for, re for reaching the goals they selected. In productive dreaming, ends and means tend to be considered together. If you want to achieve something, you need a valid strategy for getting it. Likewise, if you cannot devise a reasonable strategy for getting to a certain goal, you probably should consider a different goal. Why choose to fail? The trick to dreaming is to not get lost in the idle reverve, but to think creatively about the future and what we can do to accomplish worthwhile goals. Once we have a valid and compelling vision of what we want to achieve and how we can be done, we can focus on converting the dream into reality. Settling, setting off... Ah, uh, setting out on our expedition. The seventh and last lesson of the great explorers is learn from your predecessors. The great explorers always wanted to learn from the previous expeditions in order 
to know how they mount their own and avoid the errors made by others. We can never succeed if we have to make every mistake for ourselves. For that reason, this book is about the future, puts heavy emphasis on what we can learn from the past. Now, here are the seven lessons for the great explorers. Prepare for what you will face in the future. Anticipate future needs. Use poor information when necessary. Expect the unexpected. Think long-term as well as short-term. Dream productively. Learn from your predecessors. Why are these lessons so imperative at just this moment in history? Because as we will discover in the next chapter, we are poised on the edge of the great transformation that humanity has yet to face.